the aims of IMED was to get together a group of people from different sectors and different organisations. And we, what we wanted to do, I think we very much achieved today, which is to get a multidisciplinary audience of academics who are interested in uh, development of healthcare delivery solutions uh, and business who are interested in how to actually deliver them and uh, small-scale designers all in the same room and people from the NHS all in the same room together. There are significant challenges uh, for healthcare in the UK. But to summarise the key ones, we have an ageing population, we have higher expectations of quality of life and healthcare. We have increased connection to uh, the amount of um, technology that's available, which is both a good thing but also raises expectations. We have an increased number of people with chronic long-term health conditions. The National Health Service, and I broaden that into all of these health-based systems, need to go through quite a radical revolution in the way they think about care and at the heart of that will be technology development. I do think there's a market for app, serious apps for medical healthcare. Um, it's, there are a lot of bridges to cross uh, between where we are today uh, and where we need to be to have a comprehensive range of useful services. Uh, we've just been discussing how the NHS could provide APIs for developers on multiple platforms and on the web to access information and pass information to the NHS, into the NHS to request information or support services. So, I mean, there's definitely a lot of progress to be made in, in this field. The NHS, I think, has learned from developers that there are sets of skills out there which we need to be open and flexible in order to be able to develop and create solutions in healthcare. Healthcare poses particular challenges because of the nature of the customers. Uh, who, by the nature of the area, have medical ailments and who have interests in things like privacy, around patient records perhaps, or around privacy in their own home, if you're looking at monitoring them for certain kinds of illnesses, and perhaps linking that monitoring to automated systems. So a lot of ethical issues, a lot of privacy issues, even more than in the general area of mobile and pervasive technologies. Uh, at the moment, most of the apps have been developed by enthusiasts and really we need some more heavyweight players. We need clinical evidence uh, that these apps are going to work and deliver. Um, and that means really bringing in some big players to engage and support the, 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 uh, the development of these. A lot of the experiments that I'm going to show to you we've done in healthcare, really try and combine those two things in the same phone. The same phone is used to both gather the data... I've and been the really pleased with the turnout today. Not only have we, have we had uh, academics from the university, but also key uh, industrialists from Orange, Vodafone, Airwave and a number of smaller companies, highly innovative smaller companies from around the region, actually as far as field as Cambridge. Universities are uh, basically think tanks of people with key ideas and key knowledge and skills in how to create solutions. These are necessary skills I think to partner with business, to partner with the NHS, to bring a development stream into place. What we really need are a joined up solution for people who know how to bring solutions to market, who know how to bring products to market that will bring, make changes, but we also need that fundamental academic base of making sure that the questions that we're asking are the right ones and that we're able to develop solutions that have the opportunity to make change in people's lives. Mm -hmm.